As the sun rises on the east portico of the Fuller E. Calloway home and lights the low-hanging branches of the magnolias, it reveals much more than just a historic monument. Each bloom of azalea, bend of the path, and breath of fragrance in the air hints at the story of three generations of passionate women who tirelessly cultivated and preserved these grounds and lovingly raised their families here. While the face of the estate and the lives of the families who lived here changed with each passing season, the foundations built by the garden's very first caretaker have remained the same. And the family's values have been preserved for nearly 200 years. So beautiful. I've had the joy of all this beauty and I just wonder sometimes when I look at it why I deserved it. This is a story of perseverance. A story of faith. A story of love. This is the story of Hills and Dales Estate. The story of Hills and Dales begins on the frontier of pre-Civil War Georgia with Sarah Coleman Farrell. Her father, Mickleberry Farrell, purchased two plots of land and settled their family in the newly formed town of LaGrange in the prosperous Troop County. When Ms. Farrell was quite young, she met Blunt Farrell. At that time, they could not write to one another. It wouldn't be proper. I have it that they exchanged love notes and love letters. Finally, one of those notes was found, and her parents thought she was entirely too young for such romance. But their love prevailed, and the two were married when Sarah was 18. In 1841, Sarah's father gifted the young couple 80 acres of his land, where they settled to raise their own family, as Sarah began designing the garden that would become her legacy. Sarah Farrell's design was brought to life through the labor of the enslaved people who worked on the estate until the end of the Civil War in 1865. In the Bible, it reads, In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. And in the beginning of her God, she gave glory to him for his creation. She really planted her faith in the garden, the creation of the church garden, her motto, God is love. She was a devoted Christian woman. She would work for the welfare of others in addition to her flowers. And of course, she shared her gardens. We have hundreds of people pouring in here from around the country, and one of the things they always wanted to do was visit Feral Gardens. One visitor to the garden particularly stood out to Sarah. There was a young boy, Fuller Calloway. He worked at the store here in LaGrange, and she would frequent that store. They became really good friends. She would explain to him about her garden and what her hopes were for this garden. He came out on Sunday afternoons and would sit with Ms. Farrell and talk with her, and she enjoyed him very much. And during these visits, she told him, I hope when I die that you will buy this place because says you love it like I do, and says you will take care of it. 
she was welcoming and loving. I think Fuller was very receptive to that. His mother died when he was eight years old. She might have been a nice mother figure for him. An aging Sarah Farrell knew that she would not be able to care for her beloved gardens much longer. Her one surviving child was unable to pick up the mantle as their caretaker. Upon her death in 1903, after 62 years of caring for the gardens, her fears became a reality. Her loving husband, Blunt, was unable to tend to the gardens himself, and after his passing, weeds overtook the garden paths and the boxwoods grew out of control. Meanwhile, Sarah's young visitor, Fuller Calloway had grown up to become a prominent businessman in LaGrange. By the time of Sarah's passing, he had built a department store and several successful textile mills. He never forgot Sarah's wish that he would one day care for the garden. And Fuller purchased the property at auction in 1911. Fuller's wife, Ida Kaysen Calloway, was beguiled by the garden. And as a new caretaker stepped in to tend to the estate, a new season was ushered in for Feral Gardens. It was beautiful, it was unusual, it was like nothing else. She wanted to take care of this garden, and she also wanted to make it hers, not just Sarah's. Ida worked tirelessly with her gardeners to uncover the paths and iconic boxwoods. She built the greenhouse, and she also made a rose garden. Fuller Calloway Sr. continued to grow his diverse businesses, making Calloway a household name. And two years after buying Feral Gardens, began building a grand house in the very same spot as the original Feral home, as a 25th anniversary gift for Ida. They brought in a classical architect, Neil Reed, who suggested that the house complement the gardens, which really has an Italian feel to it. In most cases, people build a home and add a garden. Here, there was a garden and Mr. Calloway added his home. As World War I raged overseas, construction pressed onward in the face of supply shortages. And the ever-attentive Fuller Sr. saw to the selection and ordering of supplies himself. He selected everything that went into it. He wanted it to be a home. After 15 months, the Calloways celebrated the completion of their home and 25 years of marriage with two gala housewarmings on the estate, which they had renamed Hills and Dales for its lush rolling hills and tranquil shady dales. Like the Farrells who lived here before them, the Calloways always had many generations of family, nieces, cousins, nephews, all staying here. It must have felt like a home for them because once they came, they stayed. The Calloways' two sons, Fuller Jr. and Kaysen, even found love at Hills and Dales. Alice had visited the garden often. She knew the garden very well. She absolutely doted on Fuller Jr. I had known Fuller since I was six. Over the years, of course, fell madly in love with him, but he didn't know I was alive. I was so little <laughs> to him. <laughs> she said she really fell in love with him one night sitting on that stone bench down in the garden. In 1928, Fuller Calloway passed away at the age of 57, leaving Ida to continue tending to the garden and his sons to run the numerous Calloway business enterprises. Ida continued to care for the gardens after her husband's death for a total of 24 years. When Ida passed away in 1936, the two brothers, Kaysen and Fuller Jr., inherited all the properties. They decided 
it wouldn't do quite for the two families to live in this house, so they chose to put in bids against each other, and whoever made the highest bid would get this house and the garden. Fuller stayed away for nights thinking about how much he would bid when he opened the bids. Fuller's bid was slightly above Casey's, so we got the house. Fuller Jr. was thrilled to move back into his childhood home at Hills and Dales. But his young wife, Alice Hand Calloway, was not so certain about this new venture. I was frightened beyond words because I didn't know what I'd do with this big house. And then, of course, I had the two children. I didn't like that time being robbed from them. This was just overwhelming to me. Once again, the historic garden that Ida had brought back to life faced an uncertain future. But Alice couldn't deny the charm of this place and the role it had played in her own life. This stone bench was added to the garden in 1916 when the present house was built. It is a very favorite spot of mine because of a happy evening I spent here in 1928 with Fuller Calloway Jr. when I came for a dance that was held in LaGrange. After the dance, the orchestra came out and played for a group of Fuller's friends in the garden, in the moonlight. It was a very romantic evening. Like the two caretakers before her, Sarah Farrell and Ida Calloway, Alice was completely captivated by the garden. She always was just working in the garden. Whatever, whenever she walked through, she was moving leaves off the top of the boxwood or pulling a weed. She was constantly trying something new in the garden. She wanted to plant some new exotic plant and try to make it grow. Her husband, Fuller Calloway Jr., was a man of many interests. My grandfather loved to tell stories and he loved to tell jokes. And in addition to caring for the home, he also continued the family's legacy of philanthropy with the establishment of a charitable foundation. I think Fuller Jr. believed in working to make their community a better place. He did love the community and he did a lot of good for the community by creating those foundations. After Fuller Jr.'s passing in 1992, Alice began to devote even more of her time to the garden that would be their shared legacy. The garden has pulled me through some tough times. I've learned patience, perseverance, and acceptance. I mean, it's just part of gardening and life. Alice Hand Calloway cared for the garden until her death in 1998, 62 years in all. The exact same tenure as the garden's very first caretaker, Sarah Coleman Farrell. The three women cared for that garden and it has stood the test of time. If you love a garden, it's giving you something in return. It's giving you hope. It's giving you something that never ends. As you take in the home and garden for yourself, you will walk the paths of Sarah's boxwood lanes, climb the stairs of Ida's grand staircase, and smell the sweet fragrances that Alice preserved. And you, too, are welcome to be part of this new and enduring season of Hills and Dales Estate. The 
God has given me hope for the future. And I love it, really.